Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, uh, for the invitation to be on this side of the complex today. Thank you to everybody from the VFW uh, that is here to, uh, to listen to the Commander uh, testify. Thanks to the uh, Commander-in-Chief, Mr. Thine, uh, for being here. I look forward to your testimony. Thank you for your years of service in uniform and out of uniform. It is greatly appreciated. Also, Sisti Burrell, uh, National VFW. Uh, auxiliary Chair, we are proud to have you here, and we, we thank you for the many things that uh, the Auxiliary does. Those that are here from the Sunshine State, if you would, raise your hand. Uh, it is so much nicer at home than it is in Washington today. It is great, great to have you uh, here with us today. Uh, each of you are, are a credit to, to your community, uh, to this nation, and we are proud to have you with us here in your nation's capital. Uh, I do want to uh, give a, a special welcome to my fellow Floridian, uh, Karen Negara, uh, who is uh, chairman of the National Legislative Committee, spent some time with her yesterday, uh, and the folks from Florida. Uh, Commander, our work begins with your testimony here today. Uh, after reading your written statement, there is no doubt that you have uh, a great deal uh, to be proud of, whether it is the 8.6 million volunteer hours that VFW uh, members contribute each year or the $3 million in scholarships that your organization provides to students annually, Americans across this country know. They really do know the good works of the VFW and what they do in their communities every day. I have witnessed a lot of these firsthand, uh, and I am personally grateful to each and every one of those that have volunteered uh, for the, the hard work. I am grateful for the hard work that VFW does right here uh, in your nation's capital. In my three years as chairman, hand in hand with VFW and our other VSOs, we have reduced veteran unemployment, provided retraining assistance benefits to tens of thousands uh, of unemployed veterans. We have ensured the safety of veteran patients and VA employees by strengthening protections against sexual assault and other safety incidents at VA medical centers. We have conducted close oversight of VA's disability uh, claims process, a long way to go still, uh, major and minor construction programs and its mental health care system. And throughout these efforts, many more VFW support, advice and encouragement have been what I would say invaluable. I want to personally thank you for your resounding support of H.R. 813, the Putting Veterans Funding First Act. And Chairman Sanders has already alluded, alluded to it. Uh, and you all know that the uh, Veterans Health Administration is largely shielded from budgetary impasse, but other functions critical to the Department and to veterans are not, including accounts for information technology as well as for construction spending on vital maintenance and improvement projects. And I am going to continue to advocate uh, for passage of this measure as the possibility of future political gridlock must not compromise the functionality of the Department of Veterans Affairs or the delivery of earned benefits to our nation's veterans. I also want to thank you for your overwhelming support of H.R. 357, the GI Bill Tuition Fairness Act of 2014, which passed the full House last month. All of your hard work did to gather support for that bill did not go unnoticed, and I would like to, to ask for your continued support in advancing this important legislation over here in the Senate. I know that the Senator had that particular piece of legislation in his bill over here as well. The major provision of this legislation offers public colleges and universities a choice. Either they charge veterans that are recently separated from active duty in-state tuitions or they are no longer, no longer eligible to enroll veterans under the GI Bill. It is time that public colleges and universities recognize that veterans serve this nation as a whole, all 50 states, and that reality ought to be reflected in the benefits that they have earned. Commander, one other area that I was pleased to see mentioned in your written statement was the need for continued oversight of a management accountability at Veterans Affairs. In your written statement, you commented that working at VA is not a right, it is a privilege, and I agree wholeheartedly. 
What troubles me is that too many senior managers at VA take advantage of this privilege. In fact, if you look at recent preventable deaths at VA medical centers, patient safety incidents and the claims backlog increases, department senior executives who provided over negligence and mismanagement are more likely to have received a bonus than to be held accountable and receive punishment. When these senior leaders are not held accountable, the Secretary is sending a message to the hundreds of thousands of hardworking VA frontline employees that negligence and poor performance are to be rewarded. This is why I ask for your support of a measure that I have introduced. It is H.R. 4031, the Department of Veterans Affairs Management Accountability Act of 2014. And what this does, it provides the Secretary with the authority to remove any senior executive service employee for poor performance. These employees that are directly responsible for the day-to-day -day success or the failure of VA programs, and they must be held to the highest standard, which is what you as veterans deserve. I hope that this bill will have VFW support and that you will continue to work with us to empower the Secretary to lead VA into the future. Commander, thank you for being here today, and I do look forward to your testimony.